You know, in the past, I've said some downright mean and, and uh, condemnatory things about those who believe in conspiracy theories. Now, you know, as I've said in the past in several videos before, you know, it's not that I'm entirely opposed to the idea of criticizing things, because I believe there's a lot of things out there in the world that need to be thought of in very critical manners. Never really accept things that you're given as the true bottom line. Uh, but in and of that, I think there are also incidents where there's clearly enough uh, logical and reasonable evidence to support a certain claim that uh, no amount of wild speculation can really surmount. And that's really my difficulty that I have with the whole conspiracy theory subgroup. And I know, much like uh, the world of heavy metal, there's so many different subgenres out there. And if you uh, can call uh, followers of a certain contingent a, uh, something that they're not, they get upset about it. And I know that while not all of the conspiracy theorists cross over, for example, there are guys who don't believe the moon landing happened, but they do believe Sandy Hook happened, or there are those who believe the JFK was assassinated, but they don't believe 9-11 was an inside job. So, I mean, it definitely goes in fluctuating shades here. Um, and like I said, you know, there are certain theories I think they are a little bit more plausible, if not downright probable. And I think if you look at history, there have been many instances where there have been things that have been scientifically proven to not be conspiracy theories, but indeed conspiracy facts. Uh, things like MK Ultra and Operation Northwood and uh, uh, the Gulf of Tonkin. So the thing is, I'm going to go out there and give these guys a little granule of respectability because there has been evidence in the past uh, that perhaps there might be more to these than just uh, the stark raving lunatic musings of the mad masses. That said, you know, with the Gulf of Tonkin and MK Ultra and all that, there actually is concrete uh, paperwork from an official high-ranking source to verify these things that happen, which I think is the big difference between something like the Gulf of Tonkin or MK Ultra and the whole 9-11, Sandy Hook was an inside job, brouhaha. The fact of the matter is you just don't have the executive proof to back that up the same way that you have the executive proof backing up these other conspiracy theories, which in turn were actually were conspiracy facts. So I think really the problem that I have is that the burden of proof is not on me as a non-conspiracy theorist to prove my allegations are true. The burden of proof is indeed on the conspiracy theorists to prove that their actual theorizations are correct, which they have a lot of problem verifying for some reason. They always try to pin it back on us when the fact of the matter is, you know, when you're the one making extraordinary claims, you need to have the extraordinary proof to back it up. And almost always they come back with evidence that is either circumstantial or frankly non-existent. But you know what? I'm an open-minded guy. I'm willing to give these people at least an opportunity to come out and defend and try to prove their point. Because I'm that kind of guy. I'm a fair guy. I want to be considerable. I want to be considerate of others. I want to at least give people an opportunity to express themselves. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open myself up to the possibility of a very specific conspiracy theory. And this is the whole Illuminati, New World Order, global shadow government takeover theory, which has been going around in some permutation for the last, I don't know, 100, 150 years, some say even longer back than that. But anyway, for those of you not in the know, basically it's this idea that uh, at least a majority of all the big power players in world governance and, and media and business are actually in cahoots as part of some uh, nefarious shadow society that's being operated by I don't know, some ancient primordial force. Really, there's actually quite a bit of a, a variation within the Illuminati conspiracy theory subgroups themselves as to uh, who and what this organization is and who it consists of and actually what they're doing. So uh, what I decided to do was I decided to open myself up once again to the possibility that the Illuminati, this whole New World Order thing, may indeed exist. But before it's going to blindly accept it, I have a list here of 10... Fairly simple questions that I would like to see uh, proponents of the Illuminati conspiracy theory actually come out and prove to me. Because I think, you know, if I'm going to accept something as being valid, I need to have enough evidence to support this claim. And, you know, the questions I have here, they're not really that difficult. These are actually very simple who, what, when, and where questions. I think anyone uh, who believes in a realistic construct can actually come out and answer usually in about a sentence or two. A loss? We'll see if anyone out there can actually answer all 10 of these with supporting evidence from a neutral third party, which is the big caveat. 
So, like I was saying earlier, I will actually go out and formally and publicly renounce every negative thing I've ever said about those who believe in the Illuminati conspiracy theory as long as they can properly and functionally answer the following 10 questions with the third party support to back it up. All right, let's begin. So, for all of you out there who believe in this whole Illuminati conspiracy theory stuff, the first question I have for you is, number one, what is the name of the current Illuminati leader? Very simple, I want a name because every organization has a leader, right? Everyone has that supreme commander, every business has a CEO, every government has a president. Uh, every homeowners association has a name uh, representative. So obviously if uh, all these smaller, weaker organizations have a designated head, clearly the Illuminati would have one. So who is this person? And secondly, let's take it a step further. Not only do I want to know who the leader of the Illuminati is, I want to know what his or her physical address is. Because, you know, obviously for a person that has a lot of power, you probably own some property. And if you own property in most of the Western world, it has to be documented by the government. So why don't you have that information? If it's a living, breathing, tangible, physical person, they're going to live somewhere. And if they own property, then it's going to show up in records. So I just want uh, the name of the leader, and I want some records, uh, public records, uh, indicating where this person lives. Because they have to live somewhere, right? If they're real. Question number two. I want to know exactly how much money a year the Illuminati makes. Every business, every nonprofit, everybody in America, and most of the Western world, Europe, some of the more uh, uh, globalized Asian economies, their governments all work the same way. You know, if you're making money, you have to find a way to chart how much money you make so it can be taxed. Or if nothing else, you know, to kind of make the payroll a little bit easier. So if the Illuminati is this gigantic, uh, shadowy organization that controls all the world's affairs, that means they have to kind of be tied up in something. They're making their money through some uh, mechanism or some channel. So, I mean, you know, if they're doing that, then they have to report it annually in some manifestation, if not the government, to their stakeholders. So it would be an actual finite number. We would actually have a certain dollar amount that we can pin to uh, the Illuminati and their annual income. Um, so yeah, I just want to know how much uh, money they make. But more specifically, where does the money come from? I mean, you know, it's got to come from some source. So I just want a very lengthy, detailed list, an itemized list, actually, of all the sources of Illuminati revenue. And of course, also want to know where this money goes. I mean, even the federal budget of the United States has an itemized list of where the money comes from and what's being allocated to, if, just in the abstract. So yeah, pretty simple things. I just want to know how much money the Illuminati makes year in, year out. I want to know the sources of this revenue, and I want to know where the expenses are. And also, because I'm just going to take a blind estimate, I also want a receipt for all three. So if you provide me with all those three, I will definitely give your uh, allegations a whole lot more credence. All right, question number three. How exactly does one end up joining the Illuminati? Uh, do you have to have an application? Is there a submission? Do you get a letter in the mail? Are you handpicked? I mean, this is something really simple. I mean, there's got to be some mechanism in place for you actually from this organization. So what is it? And, and furthermore, kind of on that same lines, just how many members does the Illuminati currently have? I want a physical, tangible, exact estimate because, you know, Walmart's one of the largest employers in the world. They know exactly how many employees they have. Uh, we have a designated census in the U.S., which irons out a pretty good estimate for the number of people that live in the United States, uh, immigrants, illegal and otherwise included. So obviously the Illuminati, being the powerful, uh, super refined and detailed sort that it is, would have certainly detailed, uh, thorough, nuanced roles outlining all of its members, their rank, their affiliation, and their yearly donations. So anyway, I want to see those roles. Uh, someone out there, I think, can, can provide me uh, with the logs provided, because that could be some sort of internalized uh, bookkeeping. I mean, the Catholic Church does it, so why doesn't the Illuminati? All right, number four. This is another really simple question they have a hard time answering. What is the ultimate goal of the Illuminati? I mean, what's their primary objective? What's the one thing they want to accomplish? Real simple. I just want to know what their grand plan is. What's the, the final punchline to the entire Illuminati uh, organization? But secondly, you know, if they are this all-powerful organization, and pretty much everyone who believes in the conspiracy theory says they are, 
why haven't they actually instigated that same uh, formal goal yet? I mean, what's preventing them from carrying out their big grand doomsday plan? If they control all the world infrastructure and they're puppeting the world governments and businesses and media, then clearly they would have the resources now to actually enact their big grand uh, human eradication plan. So the question there is, if they have the power to do it now and they have the resources to do it now, What's stopping them from doing it? Just a real simple question with just like a simple answer. Okay, number five. If the Illuminati is such a secretive group who's been working behind you know the shadows for eons now, then how come we even know who they are to begin with? I mean, you keep saying these guys are super powerful that make people disappear and they kill world leaders and they're controlling all these you know underground sex and things, but if they're that good at it, then how come we even know they exist? I mean, if they're all that powerful and they're taking all these strides to make themselves secretive, then it seems like they'd be doing a little bit better job than they are now, right? And secondly, if they're all powerful in addition to being secretive and they have the ability to control the world's media and water supplies and all that stuff, then why don't they just simply get rid of all the YouTube videos and all the Tumblr blogs and all the internet postings speaking ill of the organization? I mean, pretty much every construct I hear about the Illuminati says that they're an organization that's very vain and very ruthless and wants to eliminate any and all forms of opposition. Why don't you go on YouTube and type in Illuminati and you get like 36 million videos? So they're not doing a very good job of crowd control. And that's kind of what I know what the explanation of that is. And also, kind of along this same line of logic, you know, if there are vocal theorists out there like Alex Jones and David Ick, is it David Ick, David Ike, David Icky, well, he's Icky to me no matter what, you know, if they're out there and they're revealing all these grand plans in the Illuminati and they're giving them all this detailed information, then why are they still alive? I mean, why weren't they knocked off 20 years ago? Why wasn't some shadowy assassin sent after them? I mean, if they're going to kill you know, JFK and RFK and all these people that are about to be a whistleblower, then why don't they just go out and get rid of the people who already actually are designated whistleblowers? Not only designated whistleblowers, people who have made millions of dollars in a cottage industry off being whistleblowers of the Illuminati. Just a little simple thing. I, I want an answer. I want to know because the logic here is just not gelling with me. Okay, number six. Just how much power does the Illuminati exert over autonomous governments? I mean, are all the governments in it together? I mean, is the US, the UK, and Nepal under control? I mean, is half of Australia involved and half of it not? I, I just kind of want to know. I mean, in, basically, are all members of uh, the federal government involved in this? State level? Local? Are the mayors, the really podunk towns in it as well? Uh, you know, what about the government workers, the low level guys? Is the janitor at the Pentagon in it on the Illuminati conspiracy? Does he get like a newsletter? What about uh, postal workers? Are they in on it? Are they, uh, do they get like a, some sort of uh, you know, stipend? Do they have on-the-job training about being part of the Illuminati shadow conspiracy? I mean, it's really simple things. I mean, I want to know just how entrenched it is into the national psyche. I mean, if it really is happening, you can kind of give me some concrete examples. And uh, secondly, if the Illuminati does have such a profound global reach, then what's the point of hosting all these false flag operations to begin with. I mean, if they control the infrastructure and the governments and by proxy the world militaries and nuclear stockpile, then why do they need to fabricate a incident like 9-11? Why do they have to fabricate some sort of uh, grand brouhaha in the Middle East? Why do they have to come out and do all these things? I mean, if they have the power and the ability, then why don't they just go out and do this instead of enacting these really grand to and needlessly complicated uh, geopolitical international incidents. I mean, and secondly, or maybe even thirdly, you know, what's the point of faking wars or military conflicts, you know, when they already have the resources to carry out their master plan? So kind of along that same line, all these military conflicts going on, uh, Jihad versus McWorld, the stuff going on in Afghanistan, North Korea, South Korea, all the stuff going on, on the Ivory Coast, the Colombian drug trade, is all this just actually being engineered by the Illuminati? I mean, are these not isolated incidents that happen out of circumstance and geopolitical rivalries? I mean, aren't these just things that kind of happen naturally, that happen all the time throughout human history? What about the Bloods and the Crips? Just take it on the street level. They've been warring for 35 years. Is that a part of the Illuminati? Is that some sort of plan for urban cleansing? 
I mean, I just want to know, are there any sort of wars or military endeavors going on today that are not a part of some grand Illuminati conspiracy theory to fulfill out some long-in-the-tooth master plan? Just give me an example, and I'll be happy. And also, if we're going to talk about that, you know, are all government officials and uh, multinational business leaders in with the Illuminati? You know, kind of on the same lines as the whole geopolitical rivalries, you know, if they're controlling all the shots, then why do we even have trade wars? Why do we have international economies? Why do we have a global competitive, uh, hyper-globalist, uh, consumer capitalist state? That seems to kind of be the exact opposite of what the Illuminati is going after, isn't it? So, I mean, you know, why is it going on? Why do we bother having NASDAQ and the Dow Jones and corporate buyouts and all these other things going on day in, day out? If it's just all an elaborate ruse, it just seems like an incredibly extravagant, needlessly, and frankly stupid waste of time and resources. And like I was saying earlier, you know, are there any guys who are big uh, prime time players in the government, the U.S. government, or international global uh, politics? And I know there's a lot of sort of libertarian guys, the, uh, the Illuminati folks, black, like Ron Paul. So the question there is, you know, if there are any political or business leaders who have achieved some semblance of power in the world of government, media, or business, and the Illuminati cartel is controlling all these things, then just how in the world did they ever achieve any amount of power or leadership when this gigantic overarching thing is working against them at all times? I mean, just kind of want to know. I mean, how do they ever attain political power to begin with? How do they make their billions in whatever industry they're in if they weren't uh, put in that position by this uh, self-ordained uh, international cartel? Just kind of want to know. Just something I want to know. Okay, question number seven that I'm still waiting for a response from the Illuminati Conspiracy Theories people. How come there hasn't been one defector and come out and blow the whistle on the Illuminati? I mean, we've had defectors come out and blow the whistle on Northwoods, MKUltra. Uh, we saw Ed Snowden on the NSA leaking. We saw Julian Assange on all stuff going on in the, the Middle East and the War on Terror. So if the Illuminati has been around for as long as it has, and human beings being the people they are, you mean to tell me that over the course of 150 years there hasn't been one single person who's been missed by the Illuminati who decided to come out and blow the whistle on it? To come out and say, hey, there's this shadowy government. I have records. I have tangible proof. I have inarguable concrete evidence that they're out here controlling the world and all this evil stuff. Then why hasn't that happened just once? There hasn't been one reliable political or government leader come forward and say, there's an evil shadow government that's running things, and here's a track record, and here's physical evidence. Just hasn't happened yet. So if there's been any historical example of that happening from a lot of third party, I would love to hear about it. And really, kind of on that same line of thinking, going back to Ed Snowden and Julian Assange, you know, when you look at the NSA uh, spying reveal, you look at WikiLeaks, why is it that not a single one of those internal documents that were expressed to the public they were stolen from the government, why didn't a single document make mention of the Illuminati or the New World Order or whatever the name of this shadowy globalist organization is? Just kind of suspicious to me. Okay, number eight, we're almost there. You know, what is the point of the so-called predictive programming technique? Uh, for those of you not in the know, basically this is just when the Illuminati puts subliminal messages in products or uh, media offerings, sometimes decades in advance that are supposed to warn people of upcoming, you know, national uh, incidents and, and tragedies and terrorist attacks and natural or man-made disasters. So, I mean, doesn't that kind of go against the entire idea of being a shadowy government cartel intelligence organization? I mean, if the whole point is being secretive, then why go around, you know, leaving clues intentionally like you're a Scooby-Doo villain for people to find? I mean, really, what's the point of that? What sort of strategic imperatives does that serve? I mean, if there's an Illuminati reference to, oh, say, 9-11 and Back to the Future, going as far back as 1985, then please tell me what sort of strategic purpose does that actually have? You know, does that make people believe 9-11 is going to happen or it's not going to happen? It subconsciously affects them and leaves their brain so that they're more willing? I, I just don't get it. I need the neurological evidence to support that claim. I mean, just kind of tell me why in what world that makes sense that if you want to be completely shadowy and off the record, 
the run around leaving clues demonstrating exactly who you are. Okay, number nine. And this is more of a personal question for the Illuminati conspiracy theorists out there. In what ways has the existence of the Illuminati physically exerted direct control over your own personal life? And I need a very concrete example, and I need a second party, someone who is not you, to back me up and tell me this actually happened. I mean, what tangible evidence do you have to support that even if the Illuminati does exist, they as an organization have done something very specific in your own personal life that has negatively affected you. I mean, you got to have a concrete example. Just, just one will do. One is all I need. And my tenth and final question for all Illuminati conspiracy theorists to answer, to get me to believe that this might have some sort of credence or believability, if the Illuminati did not exist, if all of a sudden they just fell apart and Mara went bankrupt, dissolved, whatever, in what ways would your personal day-to-day -day life be any different than what it is now? How would you live your life differently? How would what you do day in, day out be different from how it is now? And ultimately, what would the world look like? If there was no Illuminati, what would the world of 2015 resemble in a manifestation that it does not resemble at the current? I just want to know. These are very, very, very simple questions. They're all outlined here, and if this thing really does exist, and you truly do believe in it as much as you say you do, and you have as much realistic, concrete, circumstantial evidence that you say that you have to back this thing up, then you'll have no problem answering all 10 of these questions. And like I said, you know, if you can answer all 10 of them and give me concrete proof, I will publicly acknowledge that you might be right and totally uh, renounce all of my previous negative statements by Illuminati conspiracy theorists. But you have to answer all 10. All 10, concrete physical evidence, third party, Hard research, undeniable proof. If you can give me that, you know, I might be able to listen to what you say. And if you can't, well, you're just a crazy kook. <laughs>